The Israeli military on Saturday released footage that it said showed Hamas leader Yehia Sinwar and his family in the hours before the October 7 attack on southern Israel. The video that the IDF said is from the night of October 6 in Khan Yunus, shows the Hamas leader along with three children and a woman, described by the spokesperson of the army, Rear Admiral Daniel Haggery, as Sinwar's children and wife, moving back and forth through a tunnel carrying various equipment including mattresses, water bottles and other objects. Haggery said that, throughout the war, Sinwar continued to hide underground and was forced to flee to Rafa when the Israeli military went into Khan Yunus, both areas located in southern Gaza Strip. According to Haggery, Sinwar's DNA was found on a piece of tissue a few hundred meters from the tunnel where six Israeli hostages were found dead in Tel Al Sultan, in Rafa, last month. There were no hostages with him when he was eliminated, Haggery said during the briefing on Saturday where he presented a second video, which he said showed the last moments of Sinwar. The footage showed tank shelling on a building where the figure of a person, which the IDF said was Sinwar, is visible through a window before the explosion. Sinwar was 61 when he was killed. He was Hamas' top leader and a mastermind of the October 7, 2023, attack that triggered the longest, deadliest and most destructive war in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Israel and Hamas have signaled resistance to ending the war in Gaza after the killing of Sinwar. The October 7 attack in Israel more than a year ago killed about 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and kidnapped another 250. About 100 hostages remain in Gaza, at least 30 of whom Israel says are dead. Hamas has reiterated that the hostages won't be released until there is a ceasefire and Israeli troops withdraw. Netanyahu says Israel's military will fight until the hostages are released and will remain in Gaza to prevent a severely weakened Hamas from rearming. Israel's retaliatory offensive in Gaza has killed more than 42,000 Palestinians, according to local health authorities, who don't distinguish combatants from civilians but say more than half the dead are women and children. The IDF recently confirmed that Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas and the face of evil behind the October 7th massacre was killed in Rafa. Tonight we are declassifying footage of Sinwar from just a few hours before the October 7th massacre, as well as his movements inside Gaza as he fled over the past year. IDF operations in Khan Yunus forced Sinwar to flee to Rafa. Last month, Sinwar's DNA was found on a piece of tissue he used. A few hundred meters from a tunnel where six Israeli hostages were brutally ex executed in Tel Sultan in Rafa. Then Sinwar fled yet again. There were no hostages with Sinwar when he was eliminated. Killing Sinwar is the result of a year of operational and intelligence efforts to bring him and other Hamas leaders to justice. Sinwar has been eliminated, but our mission is not over. We will not rest until we bring all our hostages home. A Russian with the call sign Silva joined the Russian-Ukrainian war and volunteered for the Storm Z unit, which fought in the Donbass. He supported Ukraine and acted 
Following the secret plan of the Freedom of Russia Legion command, at some point, Silver blew up the commander and went over to the side of the Ukrainian forces. The combat path of the Russian pro-Ukrainian volunteer was told on the YouTube channel Vidu Shivdushu. In the first minutes of the conversation, Silver said that he was 24 years old and three months ago in the summer, he was at the front in the Ocheritine area west of Avdiivka in the Donbass. The Russian volunteered for the army and served for four months in the Storm Z unit before the transition. Former prisoners served alongside him, convicts who were shot to force obedience. According to him, there was a man among the Russians who volunteered to personally carry out the execution. He cleaned up every 10th person. He shot every 10th person personally, right in the head, right before the formation. They thought maybe they would have more motivation. The commander approved, the Russian explained. Silva also spoke about the habit of the commanders of the Russian armed forces to zero out soldiers. The main reason for such actions is the refusal to storm Ukrainian positions, escape from the trenches, refusal to return to positions, refusal to bring ammunition and pull out the wounded. According to him, this is done by the entourage of the officer who leads the unit. Special people are not allocated for this. In addition, the volunteer explained why he did not join the SLR, having left the Russian Federation abroad. According to him, this option did not suit him, so he signed a contract to immediately go over to the Ukrainian side. At the same time, Silva began operating in September 2023, and already in February, he resolved all the issues. While going through the formalities, the Russian consulted with the Legion. One of his operations at the front was emptying a mine warehouse of an adjacent unit. When he decided to end his service, he blew up the commander of the Storm Z and crossed the front line.